Hey there ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, before the video starts I want to let you know that if you like it, to leave a like and a comment down below. And while you're at it, subscribe to the channel and click the little bell icon to be up to date with my latest content, as well as joining the notification squad or wolfification squad like this pack legend here. Thanks for your support, and enjoy the video. Starve a curse. Feed the soul. Chapter 14. Concerning. The gawping eyes of the pale woman raced around the almost vacant, spacious, unfinished room. Besides her irregular, rapid respires, the only other sounds she could decipher was the internal fan of the air purifier and the humming of the space heater with a reading of 76 degrees Fahrenheit. Summer felt utterly torn to either remain perfectly silent or to scream her fucking head off. She promptly decided to go with the former, rather than targeting herself as fresh fodder. Kicking the fallen sheet away, Summer walked to the center of the storm cellar, where the Wendigo had been. Confusion and anxiety began to pervade her mind and heart. For the past decade, she was always a light sleeper. So how did he become free without stirring her? The woman stopped in the middle of the basement, and after wiping away dampness from sleep, bowed her head to the floor and clasped her chest to keep her disconcerted, pumping organ from bursting out of her ribcage. Next to the cleared bucket that previously contained lasagna were three short vestiges of Ben's chains, still affixed to heavy clasps, and right above the broken bits of once durable stainless steel binds, were profound abrasions on pastel paint and a very lopsided, fluorescent, hooded lamp. The probable reason for this escape was Ben's sustained nutrition had granted him newfound strength to snap the sterling silver-coated links without jeopardizing his mouth. But to Summer's relief, at least, there were no signs of mutilated limbs in case the regeneration speculation wasn't true. The upset woman could feel her frown deepening from absolute disappointment. No normal human being would have broken those thick, durable chains by hands alone. And with the basement being under three meters high, only a towering cryptid's antlers could have reached the ceiling while freeing himself. Summer wanted to punch herself. Hard. Damn it to hell with her rose-tinted glasses. It's surprising that your fairy tale ending was so ephemeral, huh, Cinderella? This time, the woman responded to herself with just a relented sigh. For her returned, acerbic conscience had every right to be cynical. She had done the research. The curse of the Wendigo wasn't lycanthropy, where the victim shifted from human to monster and vice versa. Everything Summer had obtained and read over the years, from media and books, down to rare manuscripts, all concluded that the only way to free a person was to end their suffering through death. In other words, once a Wendigo, always a Wendigo. But yet, deep down, the woman had faithfully hoped and prayed that after the sated spirit left Ben, there'd be no more beast, just her beloved with his assuring icy blue eyes. Not some gluttonous, angry, red-eyed monster that needed to be recaptured and imprisoned forever. As Summer nervously debated whether to check behind the washer and dryer, she swung around and craned her head to find the acoustic-proof door wide open, instigating her eyelids to completely disappear. Oh Christ, what if he broke out of the house and went out into the forest? To Normandy Village! To where Robert and Marilou reside. Again, how on this cold earth did she not wake the fuck up? Pulling the taser out of her coat with a new live cartridge, Summer strode up the creaky, stilted stairwell. She wanted to run, but also wanted to not give herself away from any rushed stomping. 
The rubber-trimmed soles needed to stay under her feet. The woman couldn't risk any tripping or stumbling. Or any more stumbling. With the turned-on stun gun in front of her person, Summer paused at the open entrance, tensely licking her parched lips. Dear God, he could be anywhere. Her widespread sights examined the white metal door as she walked by. No damage to it, nor its hinges. Not even a single dent. It was as if he didn't wish to give his presence away to his foolish fodder. Had the sharp beast been eagle-eyeing Summer with the knob whenever she revisited the basement? Suddenly, worry washed over the woman, because if he learned how to open doors... Rapidly, Summer scanned the kitchen for the slightest sign of a big, looming shape. Making haste, she quietly moved to the small hall, but jolted in place. Staring straight ahead at the study, staring straight ahead of the study, her gasp was caught in the middle of her totten windpipe. Oh no. Posy! The woman's dread had become a reality. The door to the cat's temporary cell had been opened. With utmost trepidation, Summer tiptoed in, her protection at the ready. She solidly remembered how the cunning cryptid didn't approach if she was aiming to taser, since he was more than well aware of the pulsating line's capability. Straight away, her large shimmering pupils hurriedly analyzed the carpet. Thankfully, no dark rusty stains or chunks of brown speckled fur in sight. Summer's emotional attachment was practically pleading for her to call out to her devoted no-boundaries crazy-ass cat. However, her pragmatic thoughts firmly repressed it. The concerned woman could only pray that Nosy Posy was smart enough to hide now that Ben was no longer confined. Cautiously, she slid the wide, tall closet door ajar and sprung back. Her tight shoulders instantly loosened. No awaiting beast in a hushed hunker. Only the many printed pages of Windigo literature were presently neatly stacked, strapped, and untouched. After searching the computer desk and book-filled cabinet to be certain that Posey hadn't molded herself into any of the limited furniture, Summer continued with her jarring pursuit. She edgedly examined the hall closet and slowly stooped to check the crawl space that contained the extra cooking pots. Granted, with his extensive jabbing horns, the beast would probably not have managed to fit in any of the storage spaces very well, or at all. However, the worried woman would spare no pouncing possibilities. Getting up and closing the crawl space shutters, Summer carefully twisted the bathroom doorknob and breathed out when she didn't spot anything patiently crouching underneath the sink or awaiting in the porcelain tub. As nerve-wracking as this was, her life could not afford to leave any room unchecked, especially with the chance that the smart-ass Wendigo was closing doors behind him to fool her. The woman turned to leave the bathroom, but her knees were bobbing at one another, and her vision was getting fuzzy. She leaned a shoulder against the soft white wall, nearly avoiding a bad bump of her temple into the towel shelf. Summer drew in long, heavy exhalations. She had to compose herself. Passing out was definitely not an option. So she attempted to maintain steady breaths. She would do this. She would find Ben and get him secured. Regardless of Summer's pushed optimism, anxiety prodded at the memory of her placing her smartphone into the electric fireplace's mantle. Dad. Summer pushed her inner plea aside. At this moment, the woman's altruistic scruples wouldn't let her in-law's life be on the line. Nevertheless, once Ben was knocked out and bound up with all the extra chains, Robert's assembling expertise would indubitably be required to reattach the restraints. Summer added to her prayer list for the older man's sensitive heart to be able to handle the disheartening chaos of seeing his son as how he is now. But at least she and Robert could decide what to do, together. With an inaudible sigh, the woman forced the willpower to straighten up and recommence her search. Thank God for electricity and for her choice of light interior. While silently sidling the periwinkle hull, 
Summer raised her eyes to the vents above. The cryptid taking the narrow route via the heat and air ducts would have been physically impossible, but fearing the unknown had caused the woman to put the indication into brief deliberation. In spite of her veins having the sensation of erratic electric live wires, Summer could not help but internally scoff at the irrational thought. I really gotta stop binge-watching those horror movies. She gave the parlor and its furniture a good surveillance, then looked at the front door, below the partial vertical lines and the ones in the kitchen. No shards of shattered glass, and the front door was still locked. If anything had been broken, the loud home security alarm would have assuredly woken her. Plus, she highly doubted that the Wendigo could figure out how to use the keys. Or even knew what keys were, so there wasn't a need to track a hoof and claw trail in five feet bone-chilling snowfall. And when Summer had last seen the beast, he was so drowsy and bloated, he could barely move accurately. Not to mention, he wouldn't be able to stalk without giving himself away with the dangling, disjointed chains. As the woman was reconnoitering her home, she was never so grateful for being a minimalist. For a giant, gorged, antlered werewolf would not be able to stay so inconspicuous. Still, scared shitless, but a bit more positive, Summer considered that perhaps he was still so sated he was resting in the dining room, with it being the only area on the first floor that she hadn't inspected. With bated breath, Summer slinked in and tentatively peered under the large tablecloth to find... Nothing but space. With a deep blink, the woman finally released another low, shaky sigh. Prey hunting predator. I'm certifiably batshit insane. After actually desiring to be startled from her missing cherished cat, Summer shot the closed back door a guarded glance and entered the large kitchen again. Gingerly, she peeked in all the dark wooden cabinets, the widespread dishwasher, the hefty oven, even the damn double-door fridge, which, oddly enough, appeared unscathed from talons. These precautions were anything less than plausible, but then again, Summer was able to compress the big beast into her jeep for transport. Therefore, just how well he could conceal himself on his own volition remained an enigma. As the woman had thought beforehand, better to be very paranoid than very, very dead. Just when she was about to exit the kitchen, her peripheral vision took notice of the many displayed casserole cookware, because they did not contain an ounce of of leftovers and hadn't been washed yet. So with the spick and span pans and the thoroughly searched previous rooms in mind, Summer concluded two definite possibilities. Despite consuming over 400 pounds of fare, Ben was still eager to feed. And he was still in the house upstairs. Summer progressively retraced her steps into the parlor, but paused at the bottom of its long stairway with much uneasiness. What the hell happens if the nourished, stronger beast has become more resilient to the stun gun? Impulsively, her concerned subconscious recalled her lost silver shell loaded pistol, which was now God only knows where, and immersed in solid hoarfrost. Would Summer be forced to use a not-so-quick, painless end in order to preserve her own life? The woman brusquely shook that thought away. No. She would rather burn the bridge before ever crossing it. This would work. After all, Dad deserved a chance at some kind of closure. She quickly checked her empty pockets and inwardly groaned. From her vast cookery sessions, 
The preoccupied woman had forgotten to grab the spare stun gun cartridges, which were upstairs. Summer screwed her eyelids shut, and again, so was he. She lifted her head while straining her ears for any sort of disturbance within her lofty, ominous residence. A damn pin drop could have easily been perceived. Summer never knew how so much goddamn silence could be so goddamn foreboding. She still yearned to call out to Posey. However, she'd rather not alert a Wendigo that could possibly be claiming the Cape House as his territory. Or worse, mimicking himself as the absent tortoise shell to entice vulnerability. The raucous brass assertion was snarled within the woman's fretting, disrupted concentration. Along the horde, ghastly images of herself and Posey mixed with reddish slaver and dismembered in various parts throughout the house. With a deep respire and clasping her protection next to her pounding chest, Summer made her dreaded climb up the lengthy carpeted flight of stairs. She froze near the top step of the bare hall to blink at both of the bedroom doors, which were fully undone as well. Summer's throat twanged sporadically. She had to choose a door to even more fear. Fantastic. The agitated woman finished her way up and just chose to turn to the left entrance, the guest room. She crept in to find only the spare full bed and dresser within. The beast was way too huge to climb under or shift behind the furniture, and the closet remained latched, though she greatly disbelieved that he'd managed to lock himself inside. Summer stared at the wooden oak shutter door. It contained the extra charges to her band, Trusty Taser. However, she opted not to risk the slightest sound, not with him being unknowingly so damn close. Her own insecure nose breathing was the only noise that haunted her ears, purposefully looking for a jump scare that would literally kill her, made the woman decide that treading in the ice-covered arboreal terrain was an absolute breeze. Summer poked her head in the connected bathroom, and gradually racked the utilities. No white linen spilled from the small cabinet sink, nor a skulking shadow was visible behind the shower stall panels. She then stepped lightly onto gray tiles until she faced the ajar second door to the master bedroom. For once, Summer was glad the door's hinging had always caused it to sway partially in after use, because now she was behind a thick white door with hidden toes curling like a turtle retreating into its shell from fearful expectation. This is it. He must be in there. Feeling the anxious beating under her breast reverberate into her arms, Summer emitted a soundless, sharp exhale. She precariously took one pace from her wooden shield and straightened her elevated limbs with a stun gun's green pointer to see the beast in plain sight, a sight that triggered the gopping woman's bottom eyelids to squint from complete incredulous shock. The windigo was in front of the middle, tall window pane. Its lacy white curtains had been wholly drawn away. He was standing upright, but unlike the previous hunched posture when he was in the woods, he was completely straight, showing his full, towering 12 feet height. The cryptid's body must have absorbed quite a lot of mass-consumed meals within his stomach for him to be able to stay so perpendicular with ease. Summer regarded the back of the quiet, large figure in surreal shock. His extended arms and long hind legs appear sturdier. His spine, which once looked like it could rip out of his taut hide, was sheathed in dense muscle and subtle skin. Skin that was no longer a sickly, pallid yellow, but a healthy, natural tan. Summer continued to gape at the big being in jumbled awe. He seemed invested in observing the bright ice windows with his huge head faintly rotating to and fro. 
His ears flicked a few times, and his snout emitted a couple of sniffs, but no other moments or sounds came after. The bewildered woman tried to remain as calm as possible. By those small motions, the Wendigo surely knew that she was behind him. But why wasn't he reacting? Was this a new type of trick? Summer had juddered her head over several times to be certain this was not some kind of new pseudo-illusion. She took notice of the white vanity dresser at his right. Because a framed wedding photo that was always kept in the center of the ligneous counter was presently reclining toward the windows, as if it had been picked up and admired. Then it hit the woman as hard as when she tripped over that poor puma in the blizzard. She hadn't changed the temperature on the cellar's space heater of 80 degrees to her favorite setting of 76, and the sheet that she had awoken to find herself under was not originally meant for her. Light eyebrows rose as the green laser sights aimed lowered from black fur to gray carpeted floor. Oh my god. The woman's realization grew while stunned senses picked up on soft rumbling. A little sable and brown blotched tail was curling over a lengthy limb. Summer's glazed amber orbs were overcoming with longing. The serene scenario was too much to bear. Her diaphragm hitched as open lips quavered involuntarily. Ben? Large round perceptive ears rotated to the hushed familiar raspy voice, and hesitantly the being turned around to a slow single stride. On the spot, the woman ogled at the held feline purring into the broad chest. With the base of her tail happily puffed out, Posey was nestled near the top of his curved belly, air kneading with her front paws. The cat's relaxed gold eyes blinked blissfully at her awestruck owner. Told you I liked him, Mommy. With the taser still grasped in a partially covered hand, Summer's arms dropped to her sides when she raised her head and beheld those eyes. For what returned her observation was not a flaming red glare filled with a hungry temper, but a pair of whites surrounding the long, lost gaze of gorgeous, baby ice blues. And even though the eyes were not human, the death behind them dearly was. Summer's teary lids fluttered through superfluous blurry vision, her nose shakily snuffling in between. <gasps> ba baby? The calm cryptid canted his filled out features as a nervous, consoling countenance lightly curved along his muzzle. Short, sporadic, muffled bemoans resonated from the woman's clamped mouth. Her best friend, her lover, her fiancé, her husband, was here. And even with the yearned voice sounding slurred and sonorous, Summer surging, healing heart could hear the smooth, pleasant tone as clear as a silver bell. The soul of Benjamin Bree was inimitable. A soft thud resounded from the fallen, heavy police stun gun, which was shortly followed by silent, tiny droplets seeping into the plush carpet. Before tears rendered her blind, Summer rushed ahead and jumped onto the full bed losing his slipper in the process. Ben blinked widely with surprise for the tall woman dashing across the mattress. With a small chirp, Posey scrambled out of the fettered forearm just in time for the cryptid to catch the former widow. She gripped onto his furred neck, pushing her streaked, flushed face into his chest, with clung legs akin to a toddler embracing a life-size plush bear. And when she felt those missed, confident hands and arms close in around her, Summer wept. Truly wept. For the first time in over ten years, Summer let her wine-aged, bottled emotions emptied from her once numbed core. Please don't cry. 
Ben drawled out with concern. Sorry, Benny. Pick up the whispery reply. I need to. The sobbing woman smiled broadly as she felt his hold squeeze gently, and the side of his long bottom jaw shield the back of her sandy blonde scalp. Yes. whimpered her beloved, lowering his ears and closed his damp eyes for both sorrow and bliss. With the returned domestic short hair upon the bed, chilling softly, the unified souls poured out their worries, their losses, and their adversities amongst the bright, highlighting sunbeams. Sunbeams that radiated the embracing silhouettes through frosted, iridescent glass paint. Are you a man or a monster?